Here we are again. I've opened the cans up. I've left the lids connected by about 10 millimeters, half an inch if you're into old money. So then they hinge up and hold there quite easily. If you do it, if you leave more, it doesn't hinge up very well. If you leave less, obviously it flops all over the place. So the malt goes straight into the fermenter. And then we've got about three pints of water boiled in the kettle. I'll show you on the first can to start off with. Um, when most of the malt has run out, tip it up so it stops running out. And then wash the malt off the lid both into the fermenter and partially into the can. So you've got to hold the tin and the lid of the fermenter and wash the lid clean. So that's one lid washed clean. That's the lid full of malt. So second one goes in. It's not rocket science this. So what we're going to do is wash. I've used ooh, a cupful, a cupful and a half, two cupfuls maybe of the boiling water to wash the first lid. I've still got about eight cups left. Might have been above maximum. And you do exactly the same, washing the malt off the lid of the can. So just below six cups there. So the lid of the can's clean. Now you fill the rest of the water goes in. mainly to one of the cans, you want to fill it up to about 20 mil, an inch, I'll show you that from the top, and then you carefully you have the rest of that one, of the, of the kettle to the other one, you might as well, you're washing it out, so the, the more water you put in, the better it is to wash out. Now, just bring the water up from the bottom of the, there's about a third of a can of water in, you probably won't be able to see that, I could tip you up but I won't bother. job really. Gets most of the malt off the can. Give it a stir up. Taking a clean cloth. Because this is hot. You want to just swirl the water in the bottom of the can. Not too vigorously, otherwise it will come up over the top and scold the hell out of you. Right. That's not bad. We'll put that in the sink for later. Next one, do exactly the same, but again less vigorously because you're already up to the top. We'll fast forward this bit, you've already seen this. Again using the cloth, I'm utilising the sink, put the, oh, this, the first can in the sink, 
You can also use the lid as a bit of a guide. Gives you a second hand. Carefully pour the contents of the second can into the first can. And as you can see, that one is perfectly clean. Now just to be on the safe side, if that one wasn't clean, you put it in the sink. You put it in the sink anyway, but you repeat this process, cleaning the cans and tip it from one to the other. It shouldn't, it normally, that can's clean, clean this one, pour it into that one, that can's clean, job's good and pour that can into the fermenter. So you just keep transferring the liquor until you've got, you want to get rid of all of the malt that you can because you pay for that malt. Not only have you paid for that malt, but it affects the flavour. The more malt you can get into your fermenter, the better your beer ends up. Just the same as if you put too much water in, your beer is going to end up watery. A bit like the single can kits, they produce a reasonably flavoured beer, but it's got that, what's called that homebrew taste because it tastes a little bit watery. Strength wise it's alright, it's what it should be, 4.2% or whatever, but because you add sugar instead of malt, there's less flavour in there and less of the, what is called the mouth feel, which is, it's the malty flavour that you want in a beer. Because nearly all commercial beers, not all of them, utilise a full malt mash. Some do cheat and put sugar in. You can always tell the ones that cheat because they don't taste as good. So, if you've got an old malt kit, you don't need to add any sugar. You find that the flavour is a lot better. Right, so we tip that into there. Clear. So that now goes into the mentor. That can is nearly completely clean. That can, there is a little bit of a dribble of malt down the outside. It is not worth trying to get that into the fermenter because what you're likely going to do is scold the hell out of yourself because liquid goes well into the inside of a can when you try to spray it on the outside of the can it'll splash everywhere and you'll end up going ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho that smart don't do it right so now we're just going to top up using a jug and a cold water tap I'm going to top it up to no we're not first we're going to give you the stir because you've still got thick malt in the bottom of it you've got three pints of hot liquor on top and you just need to stir it until The thick malt at the bottom is combined, it's getting there already, is combined with the three pints approximately of hot liquor. So after you've stirred it, top it up and just want to mention this, as you're topping up the cold water, try to pour from as high as possible. That way, it terminates your wort as you're doing it, 
So you don't have to aerate as you uh, after you've finished. You don't have to do it. A two minute <coughs> beg your pardon. You don't have to do a two minute aeration after you've finished topping it up to 23 litres. Because you'll find I'll probably show you this. By the time you've got about 21 litres in, you'll have a serious head of foam on there, and that is your aeration process. Getting air into the wart, that comes up as a froth. So then you've got to leave it for 5 or 10 minutes until the froth's gone, then you can top it up. Right, here we are. I'll show you this. I've just finished, well, I've not finished, but that's the majority of the water in. And you'll see the liquid is up at 21 and a half litres. The foam up at the top is beyond 25 litres, so 25 and a half, 26, about 27 litres. Now that, to begin with, is quite a creamy head. Quite a lot of liquid in there. And you have to stop before you get to the 23 litres mark because you can see already the liquid level has risen. It will probably rise to at least 22 litres, maybe a little bit more. It depends on how much air you've got in there and how much liquid you've got, how large the bubbles are. The bubbles on this batch have come out quite large. So it may not drop enough, it, or sorry, it may not drop that much. But I have had batches where I've had it at 21 litres, and by the time the head has dropped out, it's almost at 23 litres. And you've got to remember, you've also got that much liquid to fit in for your that's your yeast pitch. So we'll leave it for five minutes. That should give plenty of time. What you'll end up with is a meringue head where there's lots of bubbles but very little liquid in it. And rather than stirring round, you'll find as you stir it, the bubbles will part and not go back to where they were, whereas a creamy head you stir it and the bowls, the, or the, the head, moves back into position.